If you're anything like me, you really enjoy the look of old film, especially when it comes to Polaroids. So in that case, I want to show you my Polaroid process of how I create an image that looks like this and turn it into something that looks like this. This is going to be a really quick tutorial, so be sure to stop and pause as you need to if you want to follow along with me. But without further ado, here's the tutorial. Okay, so now that we're into Photoshop, let's go ahead and get started. So I did get this image from SignatureEdits.com, which is a great resource to get free raw photos if you want to practice your editing techniques on photos that maybe don't look exactly like yours, or you just don't have that photo that you need to do what you're trying to do. Irregardless, here's how we get started. So first and foremost, create a new background layer by hitting Command J if you're on a Mac, or I believe it's Control J if you are on a PC. It's just going to protect anything we do so we don't mess up the original image and have to go all the way back to the beginning. So the first thing I like to do is create a curves adjustment layer. Now you're going to notice in this little quadrant, I'm just going to kind of create a little anchor point, which is going to help me pull up this bottom anchor point so we can crush out those blacks. I do it about halfway up through this square. And basically that's removing the true blacks, kind of giving them that lifted fade look that is fairly popular amongst a lot of people, maybe not as much as it used to be, but we're going to go ahead and pull this black anchor point down in the shadows so we can define some of the darkness again. And then we're actually going to create another anchor point by clicking and dragging up. And basically that's going to pull up our highlights. So really all we've done is created some contrast in our image and created that uh, crushed, faded look. Now we want to go into each one of the red, green, and blue channels and do a little bit of editing here. So in the red channel, we're going to go to the shadows and pull that down just slightly. The, the highlights, we're going to pull that up just a little bit. The green, we're going to do just the opposite. We're going to pull the shadows up just slightly and the highlights down just a little bit. Now it kind of gave it a little bit of a green overcast, but we're going to fix that by editing the blue channel. This one we're going to do differently than the previous two. We're going to grab this bottom anchor point, kind of like when we were crushing the blacks in the beginning, and we're just going to pull it up a little bit to our liking. And this is going to make it a little bit more of a blue cast in our shadow area. And we want to do the opposite for the highlight side. We want to pull that down to kind of introduce some more yellow in there. So now you can see not only have we added some contrast, we've crushed the blacks, we've gave it a fade, but we've also did some cross processing to add some colorization to our image that reflects that of Polaroid. So the next thing I like to do is create a solid color adjustment layer. And for this first one, we're gonna make this kind of like a really bright hot pink. Think Barbie here, and as close as that you can get is probably for the better. So then I like to set this one to overlay, and then I like to put the opacity around 10%. So you can see what it's doing, it's just creating an overall pink overcast to the image. But we're going to counteract that by adding in another solid color adjustment layer. And we're going to make this a little bit more of like a really strong golden yellow. And we're actually going to set this one to soft light. And I'm going to set that to about 18%. So essentially, this is going to counteract the pink that we just added in and add in a soft light layer, which is going to help with our skin tones a little bit, get some of that pink out of there and make a little bit more warmth to the image, which again, is just something I like. Maybe you want to do it a little bit differently. Now, at this point, we're going to do two things to our overall layer. The first thing being is we're going to go to filter. We're going to go to noise, add noise. Now we don't need a ton here. I think around 12% does it justice because if you go too far, it looks like an old VHS tape, which is something we don't want. So 12%, you can see in the preview that there is some dust speckles, which kind of looks like film. So we're going to hit OK. And the last thing we're going to do is go back to filter. We're going to add a little bit of a blur and I like to do a Gaussian blur. And I like to do this around 2.4%. Now it might be something that you can't really see here on screen, but let me try to get to her face. And you can see the sharpness of her eyes and her nose. If we were to take this away, it's gonna have a little bit more sharpness. It's easy for me to see on my monitor. I know you probably can't at home, so you're just gonna to have to trust me. But around 2.4% does well. It just adds a little bit of softness to the image. The last thing I like to do is create a transparent layer. I like to grab a pretty big sized black soft edged brush and just kind of paint the sides in a little bit of a shape like this to kind of create somewhat of a vignette. I leave it on normal for my blend mode 
and I'll set that opacity somewhere around 15%. So essentially, all that's doing is darkening in these sides and kind of guiding your eyes more towards our subject. Now, at this point, I'm pretty happy with the results, and this is exactly how I created more of this, although this does look a little bit pinker than the other, so we could go in and fix some of these things if we wanted to, to maybe make this closer to 20-some percent or so, and then just kind of fix some different settings. But however you want your overall final processed image to look is up to you. So at this point, you could save the image, you could go in and tweak your other settings, or what have you, so you can get your best taste and liking. So as you can see, this process was super fun and super easy. If you do have any questions, however, be sure to leave that in the comment section below. Happy to discuss that with you and walk you a little bit more through the process. If you did enjoy today's video, consider subscribing to stay in the loop for more videos just like this. And as always, be sure to create something new today.